بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو دا الیکٹریکل انجینئرنگ چینل ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے نیو لیکچر سیریز آن دی سبجیکٹ آف پاور سسٹم آپریشن اینڈ کنٹرول اینڈ ان دس کورس آئی ول بی ڈسکسنگ ویریس ٹاپکس وچ آر ریلیٹڈ ٹو پاور سسٹمس فار ایگزامپل پاور سسٹم اکنامکس پاور سسٹم اسٹیبلٹی اسکاڈا سسٹمس اینڈ آئی ول آلسو ڈسکس سم important terms which are associated with electrical power systems. The recommended books for this course are Power System Analysis written by John J. Granger and William D. Stevenson. And uh, the second book uh, for this course is Power System Analysis by P. S. R. Murthy. And these are the two books which I recommend you as textbooks. Uh, for this course so i will discuss um, electric power system and electric power system can be defined as a network of electrical components deployed to supply transfer and use electric power the objective of any power system is to generate electrical energy in sufficient quantities at the best suited locations and to transmit it to the various load centers and then distribute it to the various consumers maintaining the quality reliability and security at economic prices so while installing an electric power system uh, the various important aspects are the quality of electric supply reliability uh, its security and economy okay so these are some aspects which must be taken into account before installing an electric power system so first i will discuss the load duration curve and load duration curve is actually the profile of load throughout the day and uh, in this figure you can see that uh, the profile of the load varies throughout the day from 12 am across the day up to 12 am again right so this is a 24 hours profile uh, of load in megawatts and you can see uh, for the first 4 hours from 12 am to 4 am the load consumption is 400 megawatts and uh, from 4 am to 8 am the de demand of load is 800 megawatts and it changes throughout the day so load duration curve gives the energy consumed between different load levels and energy is obtained by calculating the area under the load duration curve okay so energy can be calculated by integrating the load or power because this load is given in powers in megawatts so when we integrate power or if we integrate this curve or if we evaluate the area under this curve we can evaluate the energy okay so there are two types of curves first is called load duration curve second curve is called integrated load duration curve and load duration curve uh, can be like this which i already have shown you in the previous slide and here again you can see that the consumption of load varies throughout the day from 10 am up to 12 am of the next day it changes and we can evaluate the integrated load duration curve uh, by looking at this uh, profile and in integrated load duration curve we have uh, power in kilowatts or megawatts at the y axis and we have energy in kilowatt hours at the x axis so this is time which is given in hours and here we have power in kilowatts so first of all uh, we have 2 megawatts of power right so the energy corresponding to this 2 megawatt of power can be calculated by taking the area of this rectangle from this point up to this point so the width of this rectangle Uh, is equal to 24 because this is a 24 hours profile and uh, the height of this rectangle is 2 right so kilowatt hour 1 will be equal to 2 multiplied by 24 which is equal to 48 kilowatt hours so corresponding to 2 kilowatts the energy is 48 kilowatt hours so this is our first point similarly we have to evaluate kilowatt hour 2 corresponding to 5 kilowatts of power and kilowatt hour 2 will be actually the area under this curve from this point and from here to here and from here to here and this 
so this whole curve uh, which actually encloses two rectangles uh, will be corresponding to our kilowatt hours too and it is equal to the sum of area of this lower rectangle plus the area of this upper rectangle and the area of this lower rectangle is 48 and area of this upper rectangle will be equal to uh, the time so from 12 am uh, up to 8 pm the time is 20 hours and uh, from 2 to 5 the power is equal to 3 kilowatts so 20 multiplied by 3 will be added to 48 so we will get 108 kilowatt hours so this is our 5 megawatt and the corresponding energy in kilowatt hours will be 108. Similar procedure can be adopted for evaluating the energy corresponding to this 8 kilowatts and it will be equal to the sum of these two rectangles plus this area of this rectangle. Okay, so it will be 108 plus uh, 16 hours we have from 12 a.m. up to 4 p.m. and the power is 3 kilowatts okay so 16 multiplied by 3 is equal to 48 so kilowatt over 3 will be equal to 156 so the next point is 156 kilowatt hours corresponding to 8 megawatts and so on so this is how our integrated load duration curve will vary uh, okay so here again i have plotted integrated load duration curve so this is our load in megawatts and it is plotted for a 24 hours duration and uh, the integrated load duration curve will always be increasing as i have shown you in the previous slide so here we have energy in megawatt hours and here we have load in megawatt so another profile of load duration curve is plotted over here and again it is a curve between power in megawatts and time in hours and in this figure you can see that the load actually varies uh, and it uh, is actually oscillating throughout the day and it is increasing then decreasing then it is increasing again and then decreasing so throughout the day the maximum value of load is called peak load and the minimum value of the load is called base load and between the peak load and base load we have average load so this is our average load throughout the day between the average load and base load we have controlled generation so several types of generating stations for example hydroelectric stations fossil fuel fired generation nuclear stations gas turbine driven generating stations so these are all the sources of electrical energy uh, which can be used and base load stations run at 100% capacity on 24 hours basis and nuclear reactors are used as base load stations and they will operate at 100% capacity throughout the day because base load is the minimum load and it is guaranteed that the base load will always be connected to the system uh, throughout the day and we have uh, some peak load stations which you will only be uh, operated in during the peak hours so peak load stations operate during the peak load hours only steam turbine driven generators can pick up the load very quickly so they are best suited and pumped storage hydroelectric plants are also used uh, as peak load stations and in pumped storage hydro electric plants we have actually two types of reservoirs which store water so this is lower reservoir this is the upper reservoir and during the peak hours water is allowed to go down from the upper reservoir to the lower reservoir and in between we have a generator so whenever water is coming down from upper reservoir to the lower, lower reservoir it will force the turbine of the generator to run or to rotate and it will produce electricity and during off peak hours we will operate a, a motor and that motor will carry the water from lower, lower reservoir to the upper reservoir and again whenever we have emergency we will utilize that water in the upper reservoir to generate electricity so these are called pumped storage hydroelectric plant and uh, it is used for load balancing so in between base load stations and peak load stations we have immediate or controlled power generators 
and they normally are not fully loaded and the example is hydroelectric stations so these immediate or controlled power generating stations are used to fulfill electricity demands between base load and average load so that is all about our today's lecture and i hope you have understood the concept of an electric power system for watching more lectures please subscribe this channel until the next lecture it's goodbye